Now, it's weird to start off an episode of each series with this in consecutive days, but it must be done. First and foremost, to state the obvious, yes, I forgot the polls at the uh, end of the last episode. I forgot to put them in the description. I talked about it in the Ottawa episode that went up yesterday. Make sure to check that out. By the way, if you haven't already, some interesting decisions that have been made in that series already and need to continue to be made. But like I said, earlier this week, it was kind of a busy week for me. And, you know, unfortunately, something like that just slipped my mind. So it, uh, it sucks. I'm not happy about it. But at the very least, you guys did the right thing. You took to the comments section. You voiced your opinion. And in this episode now, we know for sure what we are doing when it comes to how this series is going to go down. So don't worry, your voice, your, your collective voice, your voices have been heard as far as what is going to happen in this series. Now, when it comes to what teams, what regions we're allowed to pick from, of course, we knew originally it was going to be Erie, Flint, and Saginaw for the U.S.-based teams, but there was the discussion as well Sure, some people have pointed out, like, oh, well, you could even use, say, Sarnia or whoever. But the main team that stuck out was Windsor for a non-U.S.-based OHL team. And there was also the suggestion of the U.S. Central region. Now, after looking over the comments, and really, there was also the option of American-born OHL players, which really would have muddied the waters, I'd say. When it comes down to it, in terms of who we're able to draft in this series, players from Flint, players from Saginaw, players from Erie, and players from Windsor. That is it. Overwhelmingly, the support was there to be able to draft players from Windsor as well. That way, we bring it up to four teams, which is the same amount of teams that we had in that Seattle Sea Cattle series which, you know, as was pointed out in the comments, it took us quite a while to get to the point where we even had a competitive team. Now, that was without the coaching system, so we'll see what happens there. Of course, Lion Chemistry wasn't in the game at the time that we did the Sea Cattle series, but the support for U.S. Central, the support for U.S.-born OHL players, it wasn't really there to the same level as it was to introduce Windsor. So there are four teams, four OHL teams, that we can select from in this series. That is it. Those are the four teams and the four teams only. And the other question, you already knew, Dylan Larkin. His future here, what is it going to be? And there is only one way I can really kind of showcase what the result is. It was close. It was very close. But Dylan Larkin is being traded. And he is being traded to the Anaheim Ducks if they can take him, which they should be able to. Again, super close vote, but I feel like the majority of people sided with the option of wanting to keep this kind of true to the draft to glory nature of the series. I get it. Like I said, I know it's it's tough to see a lot of these players go, but it, it needs it needs to be done. You know, again, a series with the Red Wings, maybe that is something to potentially look into. And I'm not 100% against it. I mean, some of these kind of shorter term series, like the Winnipeg series, is going to be uh, really short term. We've actually wrapped that up on Twitch. You'll see the final few episodes here on YouTube over the next couple of days if you haven't been uh, keeping up with that. But, you know, a short-term series with Detroit, maybe that is something that we do. And that way we get to see what Dylan Larkin, Philip Zadina, and company can do for us. But in this series, we're going to see what he can do for the Anaheim Ducks. Dylan Larkin off of this team. Which, to go back to the trade screen here and to really get you a look at what this roster is looking like. Obviously, right now, our one key piece is Jamie Drysdale. Uh, Robert Master Simone needs to be traded as well. There's actually... A couple of players that we could afford to get rid of. Unfortunately, I closed the site that had the wheel. But with Master Simone, I think we're more than likely just going to keep him on roster. And then we'll see what happens as we move along. Uh, we'll just happen to let him go uh, once the time comes rather than signing him. So you are all caught up on what the game plan is in this particular series. So there is only one thing left to do now. 
and that is to fill out this roster as best we can. Obviously, with $47 million in cap space, we're not going to be allowed to sign the big-time contracts. But we are going to make sure that certain veterans, as you hear the dog in the background, that's lovely, uh, we are going to try to make sure that certain veterans just don't rot away on the free agent list. Uh, although, you know, there aren't that many amazing top-notch goalies. Let's go for Brad Thiessen. Thiessen? Thiessen. Brad Thiessen. Uh, Brad, congratulations. You're going to get $17 million. <laughs> and uh, Rautio here, you played... Did you not play in the NHL at some point? Nope, you didn't. Okay, I thought he did. Maybe we used him in a draft of glory. I mean, more than likely, we used him in a draft of glory once upon a time. Uh, we'll sign him up as well. Again, $47 million in cap space to try and work out a roster. Uh, Nathan Pache, former Sabre. Let's sign him up as well. You also get just under $17 million. And Milan Yersina. Yes. Milan Yersina. Former Capital, I think? I think he played for a couple of different teams. They better have his stats in here. Oh, why wouldn't you have the team name? I'm 99.9% .9 sure he played for the Caps amongst other teams. We have to look this up. Yes, that's right. We are looking up Milan Yurchina and where he played. Where did you play aside from in the DEL? That's the real question. You played for the Bruins. I knew that. And you played for Washington and the Islanders. Jesus. Look at you. Good old Milan Yurchina. He was a eighth round pick of the Bruins in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Oh, Franz Nielsen being our top player. Now, off screen, I did look to change up the coaching staff. We also signed a guy named Dizerman. Go figure. But we have looked to completely rework the coaching staff. And so far, so good here. We are going to have a top-notch coaching staff if everybody accepts. And again, so far, so good on that front. Happy to see it. We're going to have one hell of a roster here. Of uh, coaches, at least, as far as... Again, it's a draft of glory style series, so as far as what our roster actually looks like, yeah, it's it's going to be rough for a while. That's just how it works. As uh, I guess we don't have room for any more goaltenders, which is fine. So we'll see what happens here with the final few scouts. Again, there aren't that actually... There aren't any you know, many good scouts out there right now, so our scouting department's going to hurt, but obviously we're concentrated in just one area, so it's not that bad. As we'll take a look here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that's perfect. So, I mean, we do have Jonathan Bernier for the season, and then we'll let him go at the end of it. We needed a bit of a cap dump again. We didn't get rid of everybody. You know, like Danny DeKaiser is still here. I'm probably not going to sign Jamie Drysdale. We'll just let him tear apart Junior for the next three years. Uh, I don't think playing top-line NHL minutes right now on a bad team is really going to help him develop, if I'm being honest. So that's the pattern that we're going to take with him. So our team right now is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we still need to sign a handful of forwards and defensemen. Oh yeah, we need a lot of forwards. So let's fill out this roster as best we can. The good thing is the cap really isn't an issue right now at $12 million available. I could sign some bigger players if I want to. We can also see, of course, where the big name free agents go. Uh, this dude, hell of a goatee. Sign him up. The fact he's looking for a damn two-year deal. <laughs> the fact that 38 years old that you're looking for a two-year deal over a one-year deal is hilarious to me. We're going to pay you about $9.5 a season. Now, everybody else will be on a two-way deal. Corey Potter, former Oiler, former Calgary Flame, if I'm not mistaken, too. He played all over the place. Uh, Alex Salzer. I think he played for the Preds and the uh, Sabres as well. We'll sign up Alex Salzer for the year. Who else do we have? This random dude in person. That chin, by the way. That is a hell of a jawline. Uh, Mr. Person. We also have Franzen. So when we lose... I mean, you know, we, when we lose the amount of players, we do what we have to do here. Is this Mike Moore? Are you... Oh, that's Mike Moore. Another former NHL veteran. And from there, let's go for some forwards. We need a lot of forwards. Justin... Is, no, Jason Jaffrey, right? Jason? Hey, Jason, you played a couple. We're bringing back all the all the guys. Second chance at success in the NHL. You know, Lundqvist, the best Lundqvist. It's the only way to put that. Paysonen will sign you up as well. Oh, this team's going to be something special. Coivisto, congratulations. You get a deal as well. I am going to sign Cody McLeod for the hell of it. Because it's Cody McLeod. Why not give him a chance? Steve Pinizotto. 
sign him up as well. Uh, who else do we have here? Oh boy, aren't you finished? Louis Vara. You are quite finished. Is this uh, Che Genoway? Colby Genoway. Okay. Ah, oh, that's right. The, the uh, old Che Genoway is a defenseman. He was an Olympian for the U.S. team because the NHL said, no, we're not going to the Olympics because we hate people. I'm just kidding. They had a legitimate reason to not go. It just sucked to not have the U.S. until the uh, last Olympic cycle. Uh, Marcel Gotch, sign you up. Do love me some Marcel Gotch. Good old Sharks great. Uh, I imagine this is Jason Williams, I think. Jeremy Williams, damn it. Well, I had a good shot and I blew it. Altonin, sign you up as well. Looking good at McDonald. McDonald, sign up old Colin McDonald. Philippe Dupuis. I wish it was Pascal, but that's okay. Who else do we have that's kind of rough? Laxo. Sign you up. Darren Olver. Sign you up. Latestu is a bit too good. It is weird how it always dumps the uh, finished players into the free agent list for seemingly no reason, but hey, we'll take advantage of it. All the uh, German League players as well. So we should be up to 47 contracts. We should be okay. We should be okay. With that, let's sim ahead. We'll sign some more people if we have to to properly fill out this roster. And that's going to be an issue too. Is certain players being like, yeah, no, I don't want to sign here. At least with him. Lunkfist. Now see, this is the issue with trading away a lot of people. I'm just going to spam through. Oh boy. Okay, so a lot of people rejected because of 43 locker room chemistry and because we dropped a lot of people, which... I feel like is horrifically unfair. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump cut to the beginning of the season because we are going to sim the first season here, and we'll get this team set up. All right, we have reached the beginning of the preseason. Allow me to introduce you to the true Dead Wings. You thought these were the returning Dead Wings uh, before. No, this is the lineup for this season, 79 overall, Franz Nielsen leading the way. Of course, Advocators here. Darren Helms down to a 73. Uh, that is due to the morale, but not by much. Uh, Darren Helm is not going to last much longer in the NHL at this rate. Of course, something like Giovanni Smith is there. I mean, maybe and hopefully he'll benefit from the time. And at the end of the season, we're going to let him go. So hopefully someone, you know, picks him up or maybe Chase Pearson as well. Some of the other younger players that we do have around Joe Hicketts might benefit uh, pretty highly from this season. But, you know, yet again, it's going to be kind of exactly what you would expect from a draft of glory in terms of the first few seasons. It's going to be all about the draft. And yeah, we're going to be bad. That's pretty much the expectation. Uh, the AHL, of course, you know, it's it's what it is. It's not amazing. Like I said, we're going to be leaving our prospects that we've picked up unsigned until we are forced to sign them. I think they'll uh, happen to develop a little bit better by leaving them unsigned rather than uh, trying to get them into the lineup now. So we'll see what happens. Of course, someone like Master Simone, O'Reilly, uh, Gruve. Uh, a great grief, I can't remember. I can never remember how to pronounce Albin. I'm going to call him Albin from now on. Uh, we'll be dropping him. No, he doesn't play for Drummondville in real life. Follow the roster, Doc. But again, you know, the guys like Pierce, Galad, Gretz, uh, who will sign eventually, we'll see what happens uh, with these particular players. Of course, that first year draft wasn't great for us. However, before we get into the season sim, and which, to be honest, I'm probably just going to jump cut through. You know, we'll recap what happens at the end of the season. I didn't look, obviously, at the situation uh, with the uh, free agent signings because it's like, eh, who really cares? But let's uh, let's take a look here. I wish Brant Clark didn't play for Barry. Well, let's take a look at the old OHL. So Brant Clark's obviously there. Uh, now, there is going to be a mix of players. The one thing I'm worried about is I might have put certain prospects on the wrong team. Uh, like adding them in. Like Owen Power, McTavish, uh, Francisco Pinelli I put on the right team, though. He's on Kitchener. So, we'll, uh, we'll, we might have to double check some people. So, Brennan Offman on Flint is looking like our top option right now. There was nobody here from Windsor. I'm pretty sure all these guys are in the uh, proper spot in terms of being what team they're on. And you know what? We are going to double-check these because I'm going to pin some players here. Uh, but Owen Power, 
of course, in real life, he's not even a, an OHL player. You know, we put him in the OHL here. He's going to the University of Michigan, uh, so he's not a factor. Brant Clark does play for Barry. Uh, McTavish, Cheka, Pinelli, all on the proper team. So Brennan Offman is looking like one of the guys that we're going to be able to build around in this series in terms of how good he is at this point, not sure. Uh, Simon Robertson, of course, you know, shouldn't be there. Wallstead shouldn't be there, so it's fine. Peter Reynolds is going to be available. Matthew Bales. Is this guy real? He's 17. Is Matthew Bales real? He is not. So we have a computer-generated defenseman from Erie in the form of 17-year-old Matthew Bales. Who else do we have here? Oh, boy. This, this is already looking kind of shaky. Easton Wagner, there's no way he's real, so we have a, a winger here on Erie as well. Uh, to be honest, I really should just auto-assign scouts to look at these players. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure the AI will take a look. We might do some last-second scouting before the actual draft. Let's see who else we have. Uh, Tristan Lennox is a real goaltender from the Saginaw Spirit. So someone as well that it'll be nice to get into the system. Willie Cashman on Erie. We finally get a Windsor edition in Terry Marchant. There's Mendoza. <laughs> I guess it'd be Javon Iserman. All right. Theo Hill. Again, we're not adding Sarnia. I know it's right next to Michigan, but it wasn't the point. You know, Detroit just happened to be the team that was closest to Erie, uh, Saginaw, and Flint. It wasn't, you know, oh, let's pick the teams that are around Detroit or the state of Michigan. Obviously, Erie being in Pennsylvania, the other two being in Michigan. You get the point. Owen Sound, Hamilton, North Bay, Ottawa, Mississauga. Oh, boy. Where are we at right now? We are quickly quickly dropping down the board here. Arthur Polisek, or Polisek perhaps. Okay, this is looking like a pretty thin draft for us. Nathan Steos is now an option out of Windsor. Jaden McKay as well, but yeah, again, these first few drafts could be pretty rough for us, but you kind of already get the idea of who we're going to have available here. Ian Lemieux is down in the damn 400s. Oof, Cody Morgan, a center from Flint. I mean, we're almost halfway through the rankings already. We might as well just keep going down. Uh, Elias Cohen, also available out of Erie. Uh, Piranin, so in fairness, some of these guys. Let's take uh, Golovachev here. You know, you got to keep in mind that we're using the real life, uh, ro we're using EA's roster from like September. So there might have been some moves in the OHL where, say, this dude actually ended up on Windsor, and I should be able to pick him. I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, let me know, though, if I screw myself out of any prospects by not caring about moving players to the uh, proper OHL team, because obviously those transactions are just a pain in the ass, and they don't really make too big of a difference, unless you're doing a series like this, in which case, well, here we are. And right now, I mean, we're down in the 600s. We're just going to go through the whole list here. Uh, Ryland Fallon, six foot four, as a defenseman. Hello to the next Dylan McElrath. Uh, Tyler Deline, 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 Celine Dion. Someone also available. Daniel Diamico, available as well. Not that many representatives from Erie. All things considered. There we go. There's one. Marcus Gallard. A lot of options out of the Sioux at this point in time. Niagara Kitchener. We're looking. We're almost to the end of the road here. Are we going to draft any of these dudes? Probably not. Jordan Frasca. I, I do love that name. We might draft Jordan Frasca. Anybody else? Luke Cavillan. 6'2 goaltender. He's 19. Ryan Dugas. Another goaltender. Bit of a shorter goalie at 6 foot. Uh, Daniel Diamato. And who is the final option on the pin list going to be? Here are the otters. We found them. Brendan Kishnick. What a name. Brendan Sellen. All right. Well, we could have a monopoly on Brennan and Brendan's. Cameron. Oh, Cameron. Your, your parents. What did they do? Mr. Baber. Baber? Baber. Go with Baber. Kyle Harris is there. And that's it. So Kyle Harris is the last guy that we're going to pin. So you get a look at who we have available to us. Slim pickings. Let's move to the end of the season. Well, Red Wings fans, you thought it was bad. Turns out it can get worse. 
13 wins in an 82 game season, securing us the number one odds in the upcoming draft lottery with just 29 points this season. As absurd as that is. Let's take a look around the league, see how everything played out before we get to said draft to end this episode, hopefully, on a bit of a high note. So obviously the Atlantic Division teams benefited greatly from us being as terrible as we were, but only Toronto, Ottawa, and Tampa made the playoffs. Everyone else pretty far off the pace, aside from the Buffalo Sabres. In the Metro, you see Philadelphia, the New York Rangers, Pittsburgh, Carolina, and Washington all make it. The New York Islanders were almost equally as terrible with just 22 wins. I don't know what happened. They fired their head coach. That's a brutal season. In the West, starting off with the century, we have Minnesota, Winnipeg, Dallas, and Chicago making the playoffs. In the Pacific, Edmonton, Vegas, Calgary, and Anaheim join them. So Dylan Larkin, probably very happy to not be a member of this particular team. As the Toronto Maple Leafs take home the President's Trophy, and as you see there, there were the halves and the have-nots in this particular league. Goals for per game, the Leafs had a 3-6-1. We had a 1-8-5. <laughs> Goals against average, a low of 2-4-5. For the Philadelphia Flyers, we averaged 4.41 goals against per game. So we'll take a look at our stats, but of course, most importantly, what happened around the league. Franz Nielsen led this team. You had Chase Pearson, I think former UMaine Black Bear, doing all right as well. Luke Lendenning, advocator, just 31 points despite being a key player on this team. We had Matt Reed on this roster, uh, and unfortunately Giovanni Smith didn't exactly have the season that I was hoping he would have. Defensively, uh, Alex Biega, Joe Hickett each putting up 30 points. Danny DeKaiser was a minus 77. That's how that went. And goaltending-wise, yeah. Jonathan Bernier faced uh, 2,200 shots. <laughs> that has to be a league high, right? That has to be. Uh, Calvin Pickard appeared in 31 games, had a 2-17 and 2 record. <laughs> Jimmy Howard, eat your heart out. Oh, baby. You gotta love to see just how ridiculously bad a team can be when something like this goes down. As Alex Ovechkin led the way with 105 points, McDavid, McKinnon, Kucherov, and Dreisaitl were up there as well. Max Pacioretty had a pretty damn good season. For the Vegas Golden Knights as well. The goal scoring king was Ovechkin. Matthews hit 59 and patches with the 53. Uh, Joel Farabee had a pretty damn good season for the Philadelphia Flyers. The assist king was Evgeny Kuznetsov. And yeah, Stashny worked really well alongside Patcher Reddy. Uh, for the hell of it, best plus minus was Mark Stone at a plus 50. The worst was Darren Helm. Uh, you gotta imagine that's a top line right there for Vegas. Mark Stone, Patcher Reddy, and Paul Stashny. Not a bad line to run with at all. Defensively, Chris Letang leading the way. Probably going to win the Norris. You had OEL, Yandel, and Jones all hitting 60 points. The goal-scoring king was Oliver ekman Larson, The only one to break 20 goals. And uh, Chase Prisky ended up playing for the Florida Panthers. Had 16 goals out of 20 points. Not too bad. And Philip Hronick was up there as well. 26 points with the New York Rangers. The goaltenders, the winningest was Ilya Samsonov, up to an 84. At this point in time, you had Big Save Dave, Kata Hat, Braden Holpe, Freddie Anderson picking up some good wins. Uh, the shut or good win totals as Holpe in Ottawa, eight shutouts, tied with Carter Hutton for the most. Best save percentage, <laughs> Jimmy Howard and Curtis McElhaney. The uh, Vesna's likely to go to Carter Hart. Maybe Carter Hart can gets a shout, but I'm thinking it's going to Carter Hart. Henrik Lundqvist had a pretty good season for the Rangers. Now, in terms of shots against, yeah. Yeah, the bad teams allowed a lot of shots. Go figure. Poor Demko in the Couve. Played 71 games for the rookie race. We see Alexis Lafreniere. Alexis Lafreniere, I wish. Oh, I wish we could have had you in this series. 62 points, though. Uh, Philip Zadina in Philly with 47 points in 82 games. And Liam Foody was up there for the Blue Jackets. Uh, Chase Pearson, not a bad shout. Not a bad shout. Top five. Actually had more points than Joe Valano in Winnipeg, who was up 24 <laughs> at the end of the first season. <laughs> oh, that is painful. And for rookie goaltenders, we'll see who actually played 
quite a few guys uh, actually played quite a bit here in Season 2. Demko, Samsonov, Aiden Hill, Emil Larmy played quite a bit for Pittsburgh. That's surprising. Shistyorkin, of course, played. Ilya Sororkin played for the Islanders. I think I saw Caden Primo. Got some games with the Habs. He's a 79 at the end of Season 2, so for those who thought I you know, rated him too lowly, uh, you're wrong. He develops. That's kind of the point. So all in all, brutal season for us. We will sim through the playoffs and see what the result of the lottery happens to be. Obviously, there aren't exactly high stakes for us in this upcoming draft. We're going to end up with Brennan Othman as our top pick. That is pretty much a guarantee. I didn't really see anybody else who would have been worth selecting with that high of a pick. There is no trading down. Our picks are our picks. It is draft to glory style, so no trading. That is the deal. So we'll see. Now, I believe we had an extra draft pick this year by default for the Red Wings. So we'll see how that works out for us. Hopefully it ends up proving to be somewhat beneficial. I mean, I'll take it, certainly. But let's see what we're uh, dealing with here. As the San Jose Sharks fire their head coach and the Minnesota Wild win the Stanley Cup. The Binghamton Devils taking home the Calder Cup. So Minnesota winning a cup here at the end of season two. We'll have to take a look. Alex Galchenyuk leading the way. He might have won the Conn Smythe. Interesting. <laughs> but they added Evgeny Dadnoff. And aside from that, didn't really have too many major additions. Carl Soderberg. Just the addition of Evgeny Dadnoff. The Dodonoff. Uh, proving to pay off for them. Signed on one year, $7 million deal. Hell of a job done by him and Galchenyuk. Still made it up to an 87, which is pretty impressive. For the defense, you had Kalen Addison, Matt Dumba. It's pretty much what you would expect. I mean, Kalen Addison making the team. He's up to an 84 at the end of season two. So uh, he is there. He is a top four defenseman. So that trade, uh, the Jason Zucker trade, working out pretty well for them. As Devin Dubnik uh, returned to form. 916 in the playoffs. 83 over, or, yeah, 83 overall, 35 years old. He made it work. The Minnesota Wild winning the Stanley Cup at the end of Season 2, beating the Philadelphia Flyers in 7. Philip Zadina was that close to winning a cup, but they fall just short. So, again, congrats to Minnesota. We'll see how the awards play out here. Again, Winnipeg wins it in Season 1. Minnesota wins it in Season 2. Alex Ovechkin takes home the Art Ross. The Hart went to Max Patch ready. The Norris to Crystal Tang for the second year in a row. Lady Bing the Stammer. You had the Calder go to Alexi Lafreniere. Dadnoff on the con Smythe. The Vesna did, in fact, go to Carter Hart, as well as the Jennings. Brendan Dillon won the Masterton. Jack Adams went to Chicago. Selkie goes to Bergeron. Pacioretty wins the Ted Lindsay. And Ovechkin wins the Rocket Richard. Down in the AHL, Brandon Cruz put up the most points. Uh, Morgan Frost, league MVP. Cruz scored the most goals and was top rookie. Derek Pouliot, top defenseman, top goaltender Joseph Wall. And the MVP of the playoffs, Linus Allmark for the Binghamton Devils. So season two, officially over. Let's get the lottery results here. I mean, really, it, it doesn't make a difference. We did get the number one pick. Of course we did. <laughs> Ah, oh, Columbus was a big winner as well. The Islanders got shafted. So, if there was ever a time to win over the number one pick, this probably wasn't the year due to the players that are available to us. But, I mean, we'll take it. We'll make the best of it. At least that's what we're going to try to do as David Backus retires. Someone like Lori Korpikoski, who we brought back. Defensively, we see Ron Hainsey, Derek Engel, and Matt Hunwick retire. For the goaltenders, Ryan Miller and Jimmy Howard. So at least Jimmy Howard gets to end his career on a little bit of a high note. He might be coming back here as a coach or a scout. Come on, Jimmy! Damn it, it was David Backus as head coach. Uh, and we had Blair Jones and Nathan Page become scouts. So, fair enough. Don't think we'll be using them, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I see that they're now scouts. Thank you, Kim. So let's see what we're dealing with. I actually didn't mean to skip the interview process there, but you know what? We're going to make the best of it. So we have the number one overall pick in this draft. We will not be taking computer-generated Yanni Rajala. Rahala? Rahala Hala. Uh, we will not be taking Atu Ratu. Uh, we will not be taking Bedrick Martinek, computer-generated, or Brant Clark, or Olofsson. <laughs> of course, then we added in real-life prospects like Chaz Lucius. 
Oh, boy. All right. Like, you know, I mean, we have, you know, I, I added a lot of prospects for this second year draft, and I'm not allowed to draft any of them. We will go to the O, where we will be selecting Brennan Othman, who is 24th on our scouting ranks, 28th in Central Scouting. Brennan Othman of the Flint Firebirds is going to be the pick. Number one overall. No weaknesses showing up as NHL ready, which is helpful, but he's probably going to be medium top six. There you go. So he is a 77, which is very helpful, but only a medium top six. Brennan Othman goes number one in this draft. The shock of all shocks, as you see some of the players, of course, that we had to pass on. How the hell did he fall to sixth? Jesus, Murphy. Wow, the LA Kings are today's big winner because the AI uh, did AI things. Good lord. That is horrifying. As I'll scroll through here for those of you that care to see, like, oh, who went where? It's your opportunity to look at least again a mix of computer generated players in here because you can't really stop them, but. Whew. Now, of course, this, you know, this draft here is one of the weird ones where, I mean, you can ask people, you know, and I did, uh, as far as people who pay attention to draft rankings and, you know, are actually scouts, and they're just like, yeah, no, outside of Ratu, it's, it's just a complete toss-up, and that's why you're going to see the draft kind of play out the way it did uh, in that particular round. A lot of high-rated players, but no one who's necessarily amazing, as we'll see what happens here. OHL again next up. So we do have Matthew Bales from the Otters. He's a confirmed medium top six. Had 21 points this season. I mean, B's and C's with no defined weaknesses. That's not too bad. Fantastic leader. I mean, he's he's got to be the guy, all right? Oof, okay. Mm. So we do have options here. When is our next pick after this? It's not in the second round, is it? Yeah, it's going to be pretty far down if it even is in the second round. Okay, it's not. So we're going to have to make a choice here. So we either go with Bales or we look at Wagner or Lennox. So Easton Wagner, 43-point season, mostly Bs, two years out, but a low top six. And then there's Tristan Lennox. I don't know how good he is in terms of potential, but he could be the guy for a six foot five goaltender. There's Cashman. I highly doubt he is uh, as good as advertised. <laughs> the good thing is I don't think we have to take these guys this early. Uh, it is just pretty much, actually, even with Bales, Wagner might still be there. It's the third round that's going to be a pain in the ass. So we are going to take Bales here, and we'll add another defenseman to the mix. He is a 63, medium top six defenseman, so not the worst player in the world to pick up. Probably not the guy you want to get in the second round, but that's okay. And again, I'll scroll through the second round here. The Canucks get Wallstead in the second round. As if Demko, DiPietro, as if that wasn't enough. My God, the AI, some really questionable choices in this draft in terms of who is going when. As Bolesky was low elite, Luke Middlestad off the board now. Oh, boy. All right, let's see who we have here to kick off the third round. Where, let's see, I mean, it's the 63rd overall pick, so it, it comes down to Wagner, Lennox, or Cashman. And I'm leaning towards Tristan Lennox so that we can get a goaltender. At least a pretty solid goaltender at that. When is our next pick after this? Is it in the third round? I know I can just go to the trade screen to check it out from there. Okay, it's 19th. I think we can pull off the double here. I think we can. The two guys in the 70s. I think we're just going to be able to pull this off, I hope. I'm going to go with my gut and go with Tristan Lennox. I want the goaltender, and then we're going to get a winger. So Tristan Lennox is going to be the pick. Six foot five goaltender. He is medium fringe at a 58 overall, so not too bad. Someone who should be able to work out for us. Uh, as Gleboff and Vishnevsky. Jesus, this draft is so weird. The steals for Anaheim and Tampa. Good Lord. As uh, we'll see, I think uh, our boy Wagner is off the board. He was a 67 low top six. So let's see what we have here in Cashman. He's the guy. Six foot five, 200 pounds at 17 years old. 
It's going to be a weird player. But good old Willie, son of Wayne Cashman, is the pick. <laughs> Ooh, okay. What is up with this draft? Three straight medium elites midway through the third round. We have the son of Wayne Cashman. Willie Cashman, 50 overall medium elite. Oh my god. Well, we made the right choice. I would much rather have Tristan Lennox and Willie Cashman <laughs> than the other guy. That extra third round pick that we start off with by default, again, we didn't acquire it via trade. That just paid off in a major, major way because we would have missed out on Cashman. So hopefully that makes you feel better about you know some of the trades that we've had to make here. I really like this draft so far. Two solid wingers, a good goaltender, a decent defenseman. Good building blocks here in this draft for us when it didn't look like it was going to be all that special of a draft. Now, in this round, we have Marchant and we have Iserman. And I mean, Marchant's listed as a bust. So that pretty much brings us over to Iserman, who we probably would have gone to anyway because of the Detroit connection. Good defensive zone play, four years out. Driven the win. Javon Iserman is going to be the pick from the Erie Otters. Oof. Well, unfortunately, uh, not exactly the standard you would expect from a player named Iserman. So our first real kind of miss in this draft, and from here, I mean, now it's just a matter of who we have pinned, right? I mean, yeah, like Nathan Steos at a 300 might be the highest rated player left. He, McKay, I mean, those are the only two guys in the 300s that I've seen. Everyone else is just way the hell down there. Polisek right now is the highest rated player on the board, and there's really no way to tell how good they're going to be. Were there any 17-year-old players is the question. The overagers I'm going to remove. We're going to remove the overagers here. That's the uh, easy way to go. We'd rather have someone who have a bit more time to develop. If there's a 17-year-old player, I do like Grayson Ladd, but he's got to go. If there's a 17-year-old player, it's who we take by default because we know for a fact then that they're computer generated. Uh, Cavalin's going to be out. Gallard, Sador, Steos. I might leave Nathan Steos. I'm sure people are like, ah, but it's Nathan Steos. So Fallon, I'm pretty sure it's real, though, with a name like Ryland Fallon. So that's not going to help too much. But Fallon's, Fallon's going to be the pick here. Six foot five defenseman, potentially an enforcer. Let's go for it. Ryland Fallon of the Windsor Spitz is going to be the player low seventh at a 52 defensive defenseman. Yikes. So we did our damage there in the first three rounds. We actually have another pick here in the fifth. And we'll see who we end up with here. Uh, now could be the time to take one Nathan Steos. Polisek is there as well. I mean, there's obviously not much to go off of here with these players. Uh, we can take this Finnish goaltender as well. It would be nice to get another goalie in the system. That's actually what I'm going to do. Let's take Kari. I'm guessing it's Piranen. But I'm not sure. We'll uh, get clarification on that later. Oof, only a medium AHL starter. Okay. Well, don't expect much from the rest of this draft. Let's just take Nathan Steos here. And that will pretty much do it. I have no faith in the 18-year-olds actually being half decent. And as it is, most of them will be in next year's draft anyway. So, there we go. I mean, Othman to Cashman, very, very happy with how this draft went down for us. Uh, everything else surrounding it's uh, not so good. But all in all, when you look at who we have in the system now, and we'll look at unsigned, and again, we have to rule out some people, but we have Lennox and Piernan. I mean, Piernan I'm not expecting much from, but we do get Tristan Lennox, somebody who might be able to become something, hopefully. For defensemen, we have Drysdale. We have Bales and Gretz leading the way. Bianconi as well. So that's not too bad. Obviously, Toy Misto is someone we're not going to hold on to. He was here before. And then for the forwards, I mean, Othman, that's a huge, huge pickup for us. Then Galad could be decent. Fowler and Cardwell, who knows? Hoffman as well. But then what's going to become of Willie Cashman? All six foot five of them. Can't wait to see what happens with that guy. Honestly, we're in a better spot than I thought we'd be through the first two years. But we still have, of course, a long long way to go with that one we're going to call it quits i will see you all in the next one we're going to go through another calendar year again for the majority of the first few episodes here really 
the first few episodes in general, uh, will be, you know, June 24th to June 24th. Sim a year, see what happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're upset about the whole Larkin thing, I'm sorry. But honestly, I'm happy with where this is with having four teams to draft from. I feel like that's a pretty good spot. And of course, eventually... I mean, spoiler alert, we're going to do this with the QMJHL, probably in NHL 21. We'll be using the Maritime teams, of course, and, uh, you know, we'll have more teams to deal with. So this is going to be the deciding factor to see whether or not we can get lucky enough using four teams. Uh, you know, Seattle, some ups and downs. Check out that series if you haven't. We'll see what happens here with the OHL teams, the three U.S. teams, and Windsor, just because. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. A shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I love you all. I meant to have an episode up on that uh, platform today. Not going to happen. There'll be one tomorrow. I promise you. I will see you all later. Have a good one. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.